Welcome back to Tipping Point. I'm your host, Kara McKinney. Turns out the Iowa mass shooter was on the FBI's radar. At this point, which mass shooter wasn't? What are we paying the FBI to do all day if not to keep us safe? To go after their political enemies because that's all they seem to do. So as we talked about last week with a 17-year-old gunman from Perry High School who killed a sixth grader and injured several others before turning the gun on himself on January 4th, he was very online and was into trans, furry, and other LGBTQ subculture forums and had his pronouns listed as he, they with the pride flag on at least one account. The latest news we're hearing on this now is that he posted to a Discord server dedicated to school shootings as the Post Millennial reports. While the server was shut down prior to the January 4th attack, the FBI reportedly failed to take action to ensure none of the members actually went on to act out any of the things they had talked about. According to an NBC News report, the school massacres discussion server was flagged by a fellow user and sent to the FBI in November. An agent reached out to the user for more information, but when additional screenshots were provided, they never heard anything back. It has also been revealed that the aforementioned account sent messages in a Discord group right before the attack. Via his online alias, Butler told his friends he was effing nervous and in the bathroom gearing up. He also posted a short video from the bathroom to TikTok under the took too much account, end quote. And after posting that message, he followed it up by complaining about the presence of another student in the restroom, which was hampering, he said, his ability to assemble and load his gun. It's very obvious that the faults of these shootings lie with the gunmen themselves and others in their lives who failed to notice the signs before tragedy struck. Yet time and time again, these horrific situations are used to create further calamity by disarming law-abiding citizens in the face of this growing lawlessness. But an odd thing has happened in recent years, despite all the bad media attention surrounding guns themselves and not the person pulling the trigger. More Americans than ever before have been buying firearms to protect themselves and their loved ones. These people have eyes and they read the news and they know that being a good guy with a gun is infinitely better in the face of a bad guy with a gun than being a sitting duck trying desperately to call 911 as the bullets are flying. And what do you know? That even as policing remains dismal because of defund the police efforts, the homicides still went down last year. What's the reason for the drastic drop? Does it, ha does it have to do with more people being lawfully armed as we were just alluding to a moment ago? Joining us now to discuss is Dr. John Lott, the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center. Dr. Lott, thanks for being here tonight. So the loosening of gun control restrictions last year has helped to drastically bring down the homicide rate. What do you make of that argument? Well, the homicide, the murder rate's still higher than it was prior to the pandemic. Uh, we've had a lot of things that have changed. I mean, obviously, uh, it's not rocket science, why the murder rate went up to begin with. Uh, you had cuts in police budgets, changes in the police's ability to go and, uh, and uh, arrest people. You had district attorneys in many parts of the country refusing to prosecute violent criminals. You had judges uh, in many urban areas releasing half or even two thirds of the inmates from local jails during 2020, 2021, and even the beginning of 2022. Uh, you've had bail reform. Some of those things have been reversed. So, for example, now you don't have uh, judges massively re releasing uh, criminals from jails. So, I mean, that's that's has stopped for a while now, almost two years, and uh, and that that's mattered. Plus, uh, you know, I agree. You've had a big increase in people being able to go and protect themselves. We have 27 constitutional carry states. Uh, we did a survey with uh, McLaughlin last year and Associates last year that found for general election voters, uh, over 15% of them uh, regularly carry a, a concealed handgun legally uh, for protection. That's a huge increase over what it was just a few years ago. You don't see people in California or New York particularly carrying at, at high rates. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why California uh, has such a very high rate of mass public shootings that are there. But you know, if I could just comment briefly on the on the school shooting that you were talking about there, and that is, look, you know, we've known for a long time, for many reasons, we're not catching these guys before they do it. My question is, what's your backup plan? Uh, the school in Illinois was another place that banned teachers and staff from being able to go and carry. 